So up ahead we have a stop sign. It's also at the traffic light, so it is going to stop for the traffic control, of course. But it also depicts the stop sign right underneath the traffic light. And now it's saying stopping for that stop sign. So even when it turns green, it uh, then applies the stop sign rules to get to the proper um, traffic control. Nice. Now I don't know whether this is the same sign for all countries, but up ahead that red sign under that uh, cross is uh, a one-way sign. And it kind of resembles a stop sign, but let's see if the car can be mistaken that way. Nope, it is definitely not saying it's a stop sign, so that's good. So I have uh, currently taped off the front cameras, all of them. And uh, let's see, I can't even have cruise control anymore because of reduced front camera visibility. But let's see if it will actually show any traffic lights. So maybe the side cameras are at play here as well. So let me just slowly go through them and see if it's anything that's displaying. Nope, but let's try a few more traffic lights to be absolutely sure. Of course, I'm getting the uh, front cameras blocked, so no autopilot, no cruise control at the moment, which is normal. But again, I have the same uh, result when the sun is shining directly into the front cameras. So yeah, FSD. I'm not sure with the current hardware because the sun and heavy rain, for example, they are still problems. Maybe Tesla can solve that with some software slash firmware updates. I don't know, but I hope so because otherwise the cars will need additional hardware. So here is another traffic light. So let me go to the side so I can slow really down and see if anything is detected in terms of traffic. There is a stop sign or a stop line being displayed. So somehow the stop points, they are uh, actually in a database. So the car knows where to stop and it doesn't need to see where to stop. So that is something that is there, but the traffic lights they are not being displayed purely on a GPS basis. So they need the cameras to actually, yeah, be able to show them. Interesting. So again, here you see the front camera can't see anything, but the stop line is actually being displayed underneath the car. It's not in the correct place, but since it's GPS, it can shift like one or two meters. And uh, so the places where the car needs to stop, those are GPS based. So the front cameras are currently still taped off. Now let's see at the end of this road whether it will show a stop line, yes or no. It does not, that is interesting because if I have the camera um, uncovered, then it actually shows that stop line. Now let's see what happens here at the traffic light, whether or not it will show another stop line. Yes. So here it does show a stop line at a traffic light. So that makes me think that there is a database with the traffic light uh, locations where it actually shows the stop line but if the camera cannot see the traffic lights, then it does not display them. Interesting. So now I've just taped off the side cameras and everything seems to be working fine again. So it's stopping for traffic control. It sees the stop lights. Now let's find a stop light where the car will actually um, 
needs to have the side view. So maybe I'll switch to the side lane here to turn into the street. So it should stop for the stoplight, even though the right one is green, because I need to confirm it anyway. The right lights are not being shown anymore. That's interesting. I can't really pull off the tape at this moment because traffic is next to me, but it is not seeing the color. I'm going to test this again and take off that uh, tape and make sure that whether or not it sees the actual color. Okay, so again, I'm here at the same stoplight, but I removed all the side um, tape and it is not showing anything differently. So the, right, the light you see at the most right it doesn't seem to have a color at the moment. So I don't think that the side view cameras have anything to do because the side view camera at the moment should have a pretty nice view of that color there. So here again, the car knows where to stop for the traffic light, but it doesn't see the traffic lights at this point. Now hit the accelerator for green. Now it only starts to see that bicycle traffic light and only now it sees the other traffic lights. So for me, that means that the car actually needs to see the traffic lights to display them. The place where it needs to stop, that is based on GPS data. Now, the funny thing is that at the moment, it is not stopping for this intersection, um, which is uh, really strange. If we try another intersection as well, so here we are going to pass two small intersections. Let's see if the car stops there. It does not. So now it is stopping for traffic control in 200 meters, which is at the end of the street here. Now 100 meters, it is a little bit further away than that. Let's see how well it does. Starting to see the stop line. And it is stopping. Yeah, nicely. This is, uh, is doing it really well. Now this is the same intersection, but coming from the other side. Now let's see if it will stop again. Nope. Nope, it is not stopping for the same intersection, just approaching it from the other side. This is uh, really peculiar. Now again, this is the same intersection, but I am approaching from a third side. So it's the opposite side from the first one. What will it do here? it will again stop for traffic control. This time, not really in the position that I would like to see it, but it did stop. Now here again, at T-split, stopping in 25 meters. Let's see where it will stop. This is definitely not the correct position to stop the car. And as it accelerates, it goes quite heavily through the turn. Now let's see, here we have another uh, T-split. Let's see where the car will stop here. Stopping in 25 meters. Again, same thing. So the car is stopping way too soon for the T-split. Um, Still quite a bit of work to be done on this feature. So right now my son is holding up the stop sign and the car also draws a stop line uh, at the moment. 
I cannot activate cruise control because I'm not on the road but in my driveway. But um, let's see what happens when he starts to rotate the sign. And as soon as the rotation starts, the car does not recognize the sign anymore until probably all the way at the bottom. Let's see what it does there if the letters are just upside down. So yeah, now it recognizes again the stop sign. Now, according to Andrei Karpati, that should not be because if my son is now a person holding a stop sign at Roadworks, for example, it should only be active when the stop sign is in the correct position. When it's in the down position, it uh, should be inactive, basically. So a little bit of work that needs to be done there as well. And if we continue again to turn it, um, again, it is not recognized anymore. But what happens when the stop sign is the right side up again, then it works like it should. Great. Okay, so up ahead, my son is holding a makeshift stop sign. And let's see what the car will do when I activate cruise control. I'll just go at 30 kilometers an hour. Let's see if it detects it and whether or not it will stop. It detected, it showed the stop line, but then it continued. So that is really weird. Now let's try that again to make sure that that was not a fluke. Okay, so second attempt. Again, 30 kilometers an hour. Let's see if it recognizes my son as a stop sign and whether or not it will stop. Yeah, it stops and then it continues. So it does show the stop sign and it does show a stop line, but then for some reason it just continues driving. All right, time for another conclusion. So what do I think of this update and this feature? Well, the traffic lights, they work for like 90 to 90 percent of the time. However, we've had a few cases, as I've shown, where it detects traffic lights where they are non-applicable. I did the same on the uh, A12 highway, uh, also in Belgium near Antwerp, where the highway is above the uh, other road that does have traffic lights and then it would actually stop for traffic lights uh, while you're on the highway because the road underneath is uh, is having traffic lights so for me that indicates that the places where the car needs to stop effectively um, those are in a database and those are not visually detected uh, what is visually detected? That is the uh, traffic light themselves. So whether it's uh, where it needs to stop, that is being in a, held in a database, or whether it is the location of traffic lights, I don't know exactly, but um, it does need visual confirmation or it will not show any traffic light on the display and it will not take any traffic light into account at that point. Now the stopping at other places, so uh, you got the T-junctions, so if you're coming from the bottom of that uh, T and you're driving in that direction, it always stops, but if you're going in that direction, then it seems to continue. The same with the last test I did at the regular intersection, if you're coming from both ends, um, it will stop, but in the other direction, it will just continue driving. So for me, again, that is a sign that this is uh, somewhere located in a database and classified as that road is like a main road and the other roads are like side roads and they need to give way which is incorrect because uh, we always need to give way to people coming from the right now if you go to the stop sign recognition um, it does it rather well and it stops rather well however um, when we had our own makeshift stop sign again the stop line was not in the database at that point so my son was holding that stop sign it did display a stop line but it chose to ignore it even though the stop line was red the car was slowing down like abruptly for like half a second and then it continued driving as if there was nothing there 
So it, it seems like the card is a little bit confused in those situations where it still sees a stop line, but the GPS location says like, you don't need to stop here. I think that needs some work as well because those stop signs can again be temporary, but if there are roadworks, you need to stop for that stop sign and not just drive through it. <clears throat> oh yeah, and then one final point is on the T-junctions. The car does not always stop where it should stop. Uh, in, let's say, 50% of the cases, it is doing it uh, okay. But um, as shown in this video, uh, in many occasions, it also is stopping way too soon. So you can't see the oncoming traffic. And if you then just hit the stalk or the the pedal then uh, the car will just continue and not stop again at the actual junction so yeah again for a first iteration I really like these features but you should not rely on them at all at this moment it's more like an oversight and I hope by using the system that we will also be training the system a little bit as well I've noticed since Hardware 3 that my car is uploading a lot more data at night. It used to be around 5 megabytes per intervention that you did when you uh, intervened with autopilot. Uh, right now it sometimes is more than a gigabyte that is being uploaded at night. So yeah, I've stopped using the hotspot in my car at home uh, and just make sure that the car goes on my Wi-Fi connection. I create a little bit better of a Wi-Fi connection to the outside of my house so that the car can connect easily and use that instead of using my data plan for all those uploads. But anyway, it's good to see that we get this kind of progress and uh, I'm looking forward to the new version uh, and I will continue to test whether or not there are improvements also on these features next to the regular autopilot of course. And as usual, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure that you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching, see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.